Harrod's newly appointed survivor's advocate has told Sky News she believes Mohammed al fayed's abuse extended far beyond the department store. Dame Jasvinda Sanghera says around 290 people are involved in the claims process against the former Harrods owner, but she thinks there are many others who are yet to come forward. Well, I spoke to Dame Jasvinda and started by asking her how she'd been helping the survivors in this new role. So I am only third week in the role, mm. just to be clear about that. So um, the survivors only received a personal letter from me last week. Mm -hmm. Um, so they're aware of me as well through through the press as well. And um, currently in the Harrods process, there are 290 women. However, what I will say is, view that with caution, because there will be, in my experience, many women out there who have yet to report. You know, there'll be many women who are sitting on their reporting for a number of reasons. We know it takes a lot of courage to disclose. Myself, I was um, a victim of sexual harassment and bullying by a very senior member in the House of Lords. It took me 12 years before I came forward and I reported. I get that. So, you know, I would say 290, absolutely in the process, but there may be more out there. And what I want to assure them is that when they come to me and talk to me, it is absolutely confidential. A lot of the talk has been about compensation, but I'm sure you will have heard this, the victims that I've spoken to, money isn't the focus for them. So with that in mind, what is the cost to Harrods? Because as you said, many may still not have come forward. They may do in the coming weeks, months, years. When we talk about Harrods' commitment to this, are they in for the long haul? Is there a time frame on this, uh, a, a cap money-wise? Well, the first thing to say is that the breadth of Mohammed Fayed's abuse is so immense. Mm. I don't believe it's just Harrods employees. I believe that abuse took place in other places too. So what I want people to know is, if you are one of those people that was not an employee of Harrods, please don't think you can't access me because you can. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's important you know that you're not going to be turned away. That's the first thing I would say. Um, now Harrods have accepted vicarious liability. They're very clear about that, you know, and they will not, there will be no NDAs attached to any settlement at all. So that's important. I think they're absolutely right, survivors, in saying that, you know, they want things to improve. I am aware there is an internal review and it is my intention to keep an eye on that too. In terms of our Harris in this for the long haul, I believe so. Mm. You know, I, I can't say they're not. I believe they are. A lot of people have asked just how independent Harrods process is. Of course, they are a business. They have a reputation to protect. They have distanced themselves from Mohammed al-Fayed. But, you know, the question is, survivors coming to them under the Harrods name, how independent will their support be? Will their complaint process be? And are you confident that Harrods are being open enough to know that this culture does not exist. They say it's a very different place to work now and we're taking their word for it. Is this something you will explore to make sure that that is the case? I absolutely will be exploring what the changes look like and the evidence of change as well. But going back to your other point in terms of independence, survivors don't have to go directly to Harrods. Okay. That's the first thing I want to make very clear here. You have an independent voice now and that's me. So if at the start of the process you want to talk to me first, you have that. Harrods and I totally understand that you may not wish to go to the very organisation, you know, who you see as responsible for that harm, because that's how survivors will experience it. NPL Legal is the law firm where I understand survivors are going to. So, you know, they have contractors in the law, law firm. There is no reason why today a survivor out there listening to me has to go to Harris directly if they don't want to. We always tend to hear about these kind of perpetrators who operate on a large scale after their deaths or in the historical sense, described as an historical abuse. But corporate sexual abuse is probably happening as we speak now in companies in the UK and globally. So I suppose the big question is, and I'm sure you consider this a lot as part of your work, is how do we make those workplaces safe for victims now who are going through this experience tonight? Well, I completely agree with everything you're saying there. 
And the one thing I will say to all these corporate organisations out there and other organisations is don't wait for something to happen. Hmm. Start having this conversation right now. OK, Harrods have developed this. They've had to respond to what they are now aware of. You don't have to do that. You can start to be proactive and start having the conversations about sexual harassment, sexual abuse, bystander training, sexual harassment training. You can think about that as an organisation and put the reporting mechanisms in place for people to feel safe to report. I'll go back again to my experience with the House of Lords. When I reported sexual harassment and bullying back in 2018, they had no processes to deal with me, nothing. As a result of that very complaint, there was an independent inquiry. Now they have a clear process. They have a help plan internally. You know, more survivors are reporting. The point is, once you start having the conversation and victims feel safe to report because you're creating that environment, they will report. But don't wait for something to happen. Do it now. Well, Harrods have pointed us to their previous statement on the claims surrounding Mohammed Al-Fayed, saying the Harrods of today is a very different organisation to the one owned and controlled by Fayed between 1985 and 2010. It is one that seeks to put the welfare of our employees at the heart of everything we do. It goes on to say, while we cannot undo the past, we have been determined to do the right thing as an organisation, driven by the values we hold today on ensuring that such behaviour can never be repeated in the future.